In this video, we're going to be um, looking at the structure and properties of giant covalent structures. Now, the key difference between giant structures and simple covalent molecules um, is the fact that whereas for a simple covalent molecule such as CF4, we can definitively write that there is going to be one carbon atom bonded to four fluorine atoms. That is always going to be the case. A molecule of CF4 has this structure. Okay, we know that, we can define that, and therefore, this is a simple molecule. For a giant covalent structure, we cannot say the formula of it is this. And the reason um, for that is as follows. If we were to take um, a part of the structure of carbon, which is a giant covalent structure, um, we have got carbon atoms, which are represented by these uh, spheres, and they are bonded to four other carbon atoms. However, if you move on to the next carbon atom, that could continue the structure by, by being bonded onto another four carbon atoms. So we cannot say the um, formula for the diamond is C whatever, because we just don't know. We could have a million carbon atoms um, in, a, in, a, uh, in a diamond. Uh, we could have um, 10 billion. We just, we just can't say how many there are. Therefore, it is a giant or an extended covalent structure. Now, because we don't have separate molecules of these, um, for any giant covalent structure, there are some features which they have in common. Okay, so in general, okay, in general, giant covalent structures for, form large extended lattices. Form extended, okay, lattice structures. All the atoms are joined together by strong covalent bonds. So all the atoms are sharing pairs of electrons between them. In order to melt or to boil one of these substances, we actually have to break every single one of these covalent bonds. Okay? Because we don't have separate molecules, we actually have to break these strong bonds now. Therefore, they have very high melting points and boiling points. Okay, As far as foundation tier goes, that is all you need to know. However, however, for higher tier, we need to go into a bit more detail and look at two examples in particular of these structures, give uses of them, and explain why they have the properties they have. Okay, And the two examples we need to know are diamond. Okay. While we're doing this, I'm going to leave the structures of them above. Okay. So if you want to pause the video and have a look at um, have a look at these as we're going through, that's absolutely fine. Okay. So gra uh, graphite and diamond. So first off, we're going to talk through the features of them. So in diamond, each carbon is bonded to four others. Okay, so if we pick, um, let's say, let's pick this carbon atom here. Okay, it's got one covalent bond, two, three, four. And actually any carbon atom in the structure um, will have four strong covalent bonds to other carbon atoms. Okay, diamond does not conduct electricity. Okay, all of the electrons in the structure are, all, all of the um, what we call valence or outer electrons in the structure are actually found in covalent bonds. There are no electrons that are free to move about, so diamond does not conduct electricity. Okay, again, it has a very high uh, melting point, a very high boiling point, and it is extremely um, strong um, and resilient. Okay, therefore, uses, we use diamonds in cutting tools. Um, things like drill, ooh, drill bits, okay, because we need them to be extremely strong, and also they're likely to get quite hot, um, and we don't want um, the structure to melt. Graphite is quite different in its structure and um, in its properties, and the reason why is because of these layers you have here. 
Now in graphite, every carbon atom is actually bonded to three others. So if we take just this one as an example here, it's got one covalent bond to this carbon there, one to there, and one to there. Okay, so each carbon atom is bonded to three others. Okay. Now, because each carbon has only got three bonds, uh, not four, we actually get these flat layers or sheets of carbon atoms, these two-dimensional sheets. Between them, we actually have very weak forces holding the layers together. Okay, so we get layers or sheets of carbon atoms which are held together by much weaker forces. Okay, so to melt graphite, I would have to break all of these strong covalent bonds. However, the layers themselves themselves are only held together by weak forces. This means that graphite the layers can slide over each other very easily. Okay, so the layers can slide easily Okay, and this actually gives us our first use of graphite which is as a lubricant. So it's used in en engines and that kind of thing because but it can't because the layers can slide um, because they've only got weak forces between them it can be used as a lubricant not only that okay but because every carbon only has three bonds there are actually delocalized or free electrons that are able to flow um, around and between these layers okay so electrons flow between layers okay and what this means is graphite can let's put this in a different color electrons can flow between layers so graphite can conduct electricity Okay, so it's extremely soft because the um, layers are held together by weak forces which are easily overcome. It can conduct electricity. It is used as a lubricant. Okay, it is also used um, to make electrodes. So for an electrolysis experiment, you normally use graphite electrodes. Okay, and again, because the layers can slide easily over each other, we actually use it to make pencil lead as well, or replacement pencil lead. So when you write on a piece of paper, you're actually making the layers of graphite slide off. Okay, so a lot of um, a lot of properties here that, um, for you to remember. Make sure you do look over this again and write them out um, without using this and see if you can remember them all. So for foundation in general, giant covalent structures have extended lattice structures, okay, where the atoms will bond um, continually onto further atoms. So we don't have molecules, we've just got one large extended structure. It's got lots of strong covalent bonds, which, which require a lot of energy to break. Therefore, they've got very high melting and boiling points. Diamond, every carbon is bonded to four others. They're extremely strong, do not conduct electricity, use cutting tools, drill bits. Graphite, carbon atoms are only bonded to three others. Um, there are weak forces between the layers, therefore the layers can slide easily, and it also conducts electricity.